Hi guys, it's been a very hot minute since I made a YouTube video and I thought I would jump back into it with um, this little portfolio scroll through because that is the reason I haven't been as active period um, because I've been in school but school is out now it was actually out in like April so I'm finally here now um, I don't know if you guys know I do a lot of art but I actually also am in college majoring in graphic design um, and that has kept me very busy these past couple semesters I'm actually gonna be beginning the graphic design program at my college uh, in the fall so I did get into that program as I probably said like 2,000 times <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna be going through the portfolio today that got me into the program um, I'm gonna probably try to make a, a lot more uh, graphic design related videos because I do love it I've you know grown to know so much as i've been in the program um and i just want to show you guys this is pretty much everything i did uh during these prerequisite courses uh that got me into the program so that's what i'm pretty much going to be showing you guys today so without further ado let's get into it <laughs> all right so i'm attempting to have two videos on the screen so this footage may or may not actually end up in the video, but this is just so y'all can see me kind of explaining things while I go through the portfolio. All right, so this first page is just my title page, my intro page. I just did a little bit of design. I didn't want it to be too crazy because again, the point of a portfolio is to show your work and represent your work well, not necessarily how much you can dress up your work. So I have just done a little something something on the first page I wanted orange ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> I wanted orange and blue to be my theme colors because I really like those colors a lot um yeah and I just made a little pattern under it and layered some organic shapes on top of that and that's how I got that little effect that I did on, on the first page the next page was the table of contents just laying out all the projects that I'll be including the ones that I completed and um we had to include additional projects just to show them like the breadth of our work and um, what we can do besides graphic design, obviously, and how what we do for funsies could play into our graphic design work once we get into the program. So I just have that here. And again, just some something simple, something simple. Then we had our artist statement. Y'all can pause to read this if you want to, but... <laughs> This was just like why we're interested in art, why we want to be in the graphic design program, all that good stuff. It's kind of cheesy. That was the point. I wanted them to be like, let me in, let me in. I'm a good writer, let me in. <laughs> Alrighty, and then the next page is this. I did title page, oh my Lord. Okay, I did title pages for each section. Um, and this was, I separated them based off of what work I completed in each class. Um, so I did my first section, which was the intro to graphic design, basics, basic first projects. Y'all, it's so funny. I had to like revise so many of these projects because I had no, I didn't know how to use Illustrator at all. I didn't know how to use any type of graphic design software when I was just starting. So I had to fix a lot, but I think it turned out pretty good. <laughs> all right. So the first project that we had to do was the logo project. Um, like I said, this is definitely not what I turned in in my first uh, go round of this class. I did not know how to use the pen tool, so I couldn't create a solid shape, especially for like the gap that you have um, between the J, the terminal of the J and the bold logo and uh, one of the legs on the K. I, I had to end up redoing it completely because like I said, I learned how to use the pen tool a little bit so I could clean it up and make the lines straight and I had those annoying bumps in them. And then that's the same thing for the dreamy logo. I just redrew it so that the strokes were a little bit smoother. And I chose uh, just some basic solid colors because I didn't wanna, you know, mess with gradient or anything in these uh, logos that were supposed to be simple. The next one, okay, I forgot about this one. I really like how it turned out a lot. I, um, I, in my first class, I was very frustrated with graphic design because I was like, I don't know how to use any of this software. Like, I don't like this. I just miss drawing. 
I miss doing traditional work, just drawing my little organic shapes and lettering and all the different things like that. So I incorporated my skills with traditional drawing into this first poster with the black background. We had to basically choose an event off of a list that our teacher provided and make an event poster based off that. And um, I hand drew all these organic shapes. I think I drew them on paper and then imported them into Illustrator and image traced it so that I could, you know, move it around a little bit. And that's how I got this. I also did not have my iPad at this point. So again, this is all just me like free balling going for it. <laughs> Um, and then this one you could include, like it says at the top, illustration and type. Um, and I, again, hand drew the type as well. I didn't, and that's not a font you can find anywhere. Um, and I really had a lot of fun doing that. And I was like, okay, maybe my skills actually can be put to use in, in this program. Because I was like, your girl does not know how to, I don't know how to use Illustrator. And I was so frustrated. I was like, maybe I picked the wrong. <coughs> I was like, maybe. <laughs> I chose, okay. I was like, maybe I picked the wrong profession. Maybe this isn't for me, but I just had to learn a couple of things. I love this now. Like I said, there are definitely more videos to come um, because I've fallen in love with this now. And I, like I said, when I learned how to incorporate my traditional skills and things I already knew into graphic design, that took it to a whole nother level completely. Um, and yeah, the one on the other side, the pink one, I be, I was about to say right, but I'm like, is this going to be there right? So I just said the other side. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the other one is, was type only. So I just found this little groovy text. I wanted the vibe to be like hip and, um, like groovy and contemporary. So I chose that little groovy font and I just took, stuck with a mostly monochromatic color scheme with the white to add a little contrast. Um, I definitely probably would go back now and change some things. The um, letting on the over 1,300 literary font, that part, it seems really tight <laughs> to me. And then the over 200, there's a, it's not aligned and just little nitpicky things, you know, um, that I would probably change. But I overall still like it. Again, like I said, when I tell y'all, I did not know how to use Illustrator. I did not know how to use Illustrator, <laughs> like at all. All right, oh my gosh, I forgot about this project too. Y'all, I haven't looked at, school was out in like April, like the end of April, and I haven't looked at any of this since then. And then we got our decisions, May 7th, so I haven't looked at this stuff in like a month. It's, I think it's June 6th. No, it's actually June 7th today, so it's been a month since I've seen any of this. And it's like exciting to look at it again. Um, okay, so these are, we had to do a book cover assignment. Again, we were given some titles at random. Um, oh, it's just my shadow. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, we were giving some titles, some book titles at random, and um, we were we just had to do a illustrative based and a photographic based design. Now, uh, these illustrative co illustrative covers are not at all what I turned into my first class because again, I had no iPad, I had no Procreate, I did not yet know how to use the pen tool very well, so it was very much raggedy i might insert a picture of it with the original oh wait the original is on the process page i'll show that um yeah so i redid it completely i put my real art skills to the test and i drew these graphics on procreate imported them into illustrator cleaned them up a little bit and that's how we ended up with these and then the ones on my left <laughs> the photographic covers i took all these photos myself uh we weren't allowed to use photos taken off the internet from my understanding we weren't allowed to um so i just pulled out that iphone <laughs> pulled out that good old iphone and figured something out i think i used the um the mono stage light setting on portrait mode and i just literally took these pictures on my countertop in my bathroom like this speckled black and white that's my countertop like it's just that was already black and white and then the lighting i'm telling you the camera did everything for me for the most part and they just turned out really well i really love the typography that i used for the titles i think it's called like lust script display or something like that on adobe fonts and i love how it turned out even my professor was like oh caitlin what is this yeah these were super good super strong um again my illustrative ones did not start off like this these are what i turned into the um the jury for the program they got the good end this is beautiful i love how these turn out but my poor professor had to see that ugly <laughs> ugly mess that i turned in the first time 
Um, yeah, and the next page is just them mocked up. These are the photographic ones. I just want to do a simple mock up just to display um, the front because the back was not that important. The back and the spine wasn't that important. Um, I should have scooted over this, the one that's women in aristocratic culture. I should have scooted that over a little bit because I don't like how the W swoop is on the edge like that. But other than that, really like these. And these are the illustrated ones mocked up. Like I said, I literally just drew everything on Procreate, hand wrote all the text, um, there's no fonts. All this stuff is literally hand drawn. And I think I use like the chalk brush for the type, um, the studio pen and the noise brush for all the other, all the other graphics, I'm pretty sure. Procreate is life, y'all. Like, <laughs> it's the best. And this is just the process sheet. Here are the ugly, you can see where it says former illustrated book covers. It's so ugly, oh my gosh. Okay, it's not bad, right? But it's just like, when you learn how to do things better, your old stuff is like disgusting to you. Um, but yeah, we just I just included some process and um, yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're into the next class, my typography class. I took this class as, how many times am I gonna say class? I took this course <laughs> at the same time as I took the previous one that I just showed you. And um, yeah, it was really annoying. I don't think I really liked it because I didn't understand the importance of typography. And I was like, oh my gosh, we have to do, this is all we're doing in this class is type, but I actually learned a lot in this class as well. Um, and yeah, I just did the title page the same as I did the other one, except instead of blue, I did orange and I do that throughout the portfolio. So, okay, I do like this one as well. I forgot about it. Uh, we had to do a hand-drawn type based off of a keyword that we picked off of a list again. Um, and my keyword that I chose was dot because I love dots very much. I feel like it's a very underrated pattern. <laughs> and then, I don't know, stippling has dots. Dots are just, they should be using everything to me, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, my my keyword was dot. And instead of doing like a dotted type or just like something simple, I wanted the idea of the type to, when you typed out a word or um, a phrase or whatever you were typing, it looked like a line of dots rather than like all the legs and the stems of each letter to be dots, made of dots, if that makes sense. So, um, and we only had to do, we didn't have to do the whole alphabet, thank God. We just had to do like, um, you know, a combination letter, a curved letter, and a, you know, um, letter with corners. So I just did K, R, and S. Of course I had to do K, it's Caitlin. <laughs> but yeah, I did K, I did R, and I did S. And I think these turned out really well. Again, figured out how to use the pen tool a little bit. So I was able to uh, just, redo what I turned in which was just like a hand-drawn version of this and then I just vectorized it in Illustrator. The next one also completely misunderstood the assignment. The teacher was like no warping, no special effects, da 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 da, just make the type look expressive and make a poster based off of a dialogue on a show and as you can see the original one is warping everywhere. It looks raggedy, it looks like the crackhead hours of the night like <laughs> it looks a mess and i'm pretty sure i remember doing this one pretty rushed um and as far as the colors go i was trying to do it because this dialogue is from spongebob i am the spongebob fan um but i did this based off of a dialogue from spongebob and so i was just doing the patch the the what <laughs> i was doing the colors of like patrick um blue water a yellow spongebob it was again i don't like it um, so I just, you know, I didn't want to completely redo this one because the concept was there. Um, but I just changed the colors a little bit so that it was a little bit more bright and the colors had a little bit more contrast. Um, and I took all the warp off because that was stupid. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how that one, like I said, this one, like I said, these projects weren't that exciting to me. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, and this one was a another event poster that we had to do again all we did was posters basically for typography but um yeah this one was an event that we could only use type of course and one of them we had like these really tight stipulations that all the text had to be the same size 
we had to include include all the coffee and it had to be the same font and that's the one that's the green one now the gold one we had a little bit more freedom and um but we had to use a grid or something like i said these were not only was it boring because it was type only but it was just because we had such strict stipulations for each project but this is how this one turned out it's okay i wanted the one the green one to kind of look like a, a ticket to the event and i think i kind of succeeded in that but um yeah i just wanted it i tried to put some character in it through color since we had so many like type restrictions Alrighty, and next okay this is my favorite project from the class because we got to act up and do a whole bunch of like extra stuff with type um we had to make a type specimen booklet and um we could pick any topic we wanted we just had to use the same font to basically advertise the font and make somebody want to use it and i chose the myriad variations um and I, my topic was aromatherapy because we love our essential oils in here. We love homeopathic medicine, that type of thing. <laughs> so I just did a quick little rundown on like some basic essential oils and how aromatherapy is beneficial and things like that. And I just basically made little shapes out of the O's and the asterisk and um, the different punctuation marks just to show off the different things um, this font could do and I tried to stick again with the same color so that it looked unified um yeah and I think I added yeah it looks like I added a little drop shadow to show them since we didn't actually print these book it, booklets <laughs> because COVID made us do everything from home which is again another reason why this portfolio is all digital because we weren't in school so everything was done digitally um yeah and I think that's the last project yeah this is just the process sheet um wasn't really Actually, there was a lot to it now that I'm looking at, it, looking at it. If you look at like the tiny grid photos, you can see that this was looking completely different <laughs> for a minute, especially those first two, three black and white ones. Um, and then you can see all the different colorways that I kind of went through. Alrighty, and the, I don't know if this is the last one or not, but this is from Inter Intermediate Graphic Design, the next level up. So again, I had more resources in this class. Uh, we had a lot less like, tight strict rules on our projects so yeah this is the next one and again i was just alternating the blue and orange dot pattern for each title page oh wait no i forgot i hated this class <laughs> i didn't hate, okay i didn't hate the class but i just hated the setup of it so basically the whole entire semester it was the exact same project you basically were just making a brand for it should have been an item but she had us do elements of the periodic table and when I tell y'all that was so whack like it was so boring and I she picked the element for us at that so like I couldn't even pick neon and do something fun or gold I got iodine y'all this is what I was assigned so I tried to make it a little bit more playful um, apparently iodine is this like sublime element that is this cool purple gas so I tried to go with that and make something a little bit more creative and of course we did it by steps like the logo the packaging da 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 so and this is the logo i came up with just a simple word mark um and like icon that's kind of like a word mark obviously because it's like i and o but um that was like the key thing the key element in the logo was this little like vaporizing o um to represent iodine changing states <laughs> all right and then the next part was the packaging and y'all i struggled so much with this packaging i remember because everything i turned in my professor didn't like and i was like look you're not gonna like anything and it's just like <laughs> i kept going different directions and this is what i ended up with even towards the last day that like the last day of class she was like mm, i'm still not feeling this packaging and i'm like i don't know what you want me to do at this point um so yeah um this is what we ended up with. Uh, this is actually not what even printed. We were able to pick up and get our packages printed on a die cut. Um, I don't feel like getting it. It's in there. I will show y'all what it looks like. I might insert pictures of what it looks like. Oh wait, there's pictures in here of what it looks like. Um, but yeah, this is what it came out as. I just got the cool little clear window thing going on so you could see the iodine crystals, which is the products. Um, and then I have like some illustrative elements. I wanted it to look kind of like hip and trippy kind of. 
um since this project was so boring <laughs> so that's kind of what i've tried to do here and even attach a little coupon star on the back by the hand i thought that was cool that's i thought this packaging was so cool like i'm like if i saw this in a store i would buy it not even knowing that iodine, iodine was like this boring element but i don't know um yeah this is what it looks like in person i just recycled some plastic and put it as the the clear window for the packaging um so yeah i think it turned out really good actually and i actually did it in another color so it's in this the other color that i showed above i got it printed in that color too but i don't think i built it um but yeah i like how it turned out i had to use hot glue so it looked a little messy this is not how obviously they were constructed in real life but i think for a homemade package it looks okay <laughs> and the jury thought so apparently since they got me in the program so yeah and i just photographed it i put two pieces of poster board one on the wall and then one on the uh floor and like cropped it in so it would look like i had a background tell y'all we had to rig so much stuff doing this at home it was ridiculous um and then i included the process for you can see all the different package styles like like i went through in my head for brainstorming and then what we actually came up with um yeah <laughs> so that's how that came to be and then the third part was for ad campaigns and we had to do three different ones we had to do an um environmental one like billboard bus stop sign something that you would see out in the world we had to do a social media ad then we had to do just a basic print one and i started with presenting the print one um i just did like a basic poster like you would see maybe in the bathroom or somewhere where they did cleaning because that's what iodine is good for it's a good disinfectant agent um so yeah and i just found this cute little mock-up on a brick wall of a poster um and then instagram that's our social media ad oh i should have changed the title from graphic google to <laughs> iodine or something but oh well they didn't notice maybe they did <laughs> but yeah this is the instagram post ad it's just simple another variation of what we did before and then this was my like attempt to be different in my environmental ad because i know everybody did billboards or bus stop signs or different <laughs> variations of the same thing so i found a mock-up for a door hanger and i was like but what if this was in a hotel and they use um iodine to keep their hotel rooms clean so i just adapted uh the design one of the designs that i had made and this is making your room crystal clean with iodine and i think it turned out pretty good i just noticed that <laughs> the logo is in the center on the door hanger and it's in the corner in the big box y'all i don't even know how i got it at this point <laughs> but it looks, I think it looks pretty cool. And I know my professor appreciated in, in my feedback for the actual class, she was like, oh, that's cool, a door hanger. So yeah, that was my idea for being different. <laughs> and then we had to do an animated GIF, y'all. When I tell you I suck at animation, that was my first like ever attempt at animation. So I'm not like too mad at myself, but y'all, it was so hard. It was so hard um and the gif was bad like it was just really blocky i mean like i said for a first animation it looks good but i was looking at other people's animations i was like child if that's the deciding factor it ain't gonna work out for me <laughs> but it worked out for me because everything else was pretty strong but yeah in this in this slide i just presented the frames that i use and i don't even think this is all the frames i think i like shorten it down so it wouldn't be so I'll be able to explain it a little bit and include the gist of the project. Yeah, that wasn't fun. <laughs> and then I just did little frames as well of the brand presentation, which was the final project in the class. And then I just consolidated it all together for another presentation. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's that. And then the last section, this is the last section. The last section was additional projects. <laughs> um and these were all of the things that i didn't complete well all the things that i completed outside of regular graphic design courses for the club for the university um so i did drawing painting that i've done and then some work that i did in an illustration like elective graphic design course 
um so i did this in my first one of my first semesters at my college at first and this is a hand-drawn image i told y'all i love my dots i love this seeing it all over again um it's posted on my instagram too i think i love it so much and my teacher posted on her instagram so it was very successful uh, i got a lot of stippling this took at least a week to do if i remember correctly and i got some shading in here some depth i've got like these little blob shapes kind of like caving in on each other i really like this it's super cool um and I thought they would think it was cool too. So I included it in here. Very high contrast, black and white. And I think I did this all with um, those Faber-Castell pens that I love so much. <laughs> um, yeah, cause y'all Faber-Castell doesn't die. If I did this with a Micron pen, this would be the only project that I could complete with the Micron pen. Wait, not me put Micron pen on here. That's embarrassing. I don't even like Micron. <laughs> all right and and i did it again y'all i swear i do not be supporting micron like that it's favorite castell all day anyway this is just another fun little painting i did um i used gouache and gel pen and this metallic watercolor that i actually won so my school does this really cool thing um in the art building they have this little setup the first week of class and if you put your name on a little slip, they'll do a raffle for like these really cool art giveaways. And your girl won one time and they gave me these beautiful pearlescent watercolors that retail at like 80 bucks, I believe. And they're just amazing. I really try not to even use them that much because they're beautiful. They're beautiful. And I used them in this <laughs> because I just felt like being special in this one, obviously. And I think I did this because I was always like, complaining about this struggle in drawing hands i was like man i can't draw hands I suck at drawing hands and i was like well let me try to draw feet i bet those are easier and they were way easier than drawing hands <laughs> so this was a super fun project that i thought i would share with them that they would appreciate um and then i think this is the last one that i presented to them this was my dozen project for my illustration class that i took um and the idea of the project was to create a composition with a series of 12, whatever you wanted to be, um, just part of one 12 part installation or composition. Uh, and I chose to do a calendar. Um, I think I called it like people of color or something. Um, and I, we had to set three rules too. And my rules were you can, they have to have like an unnatural face, skin color. Um, I have to include like the typography of the month associated with them and I forgot what the third thing was but I think they turned out really really cool and I wanted to share these as well my favorite ones are probably June of course because that's me <laughs> probably June July um January oh, this is hard the only ones I'm really not feeling now that I'm looking at it is April um in august maybe maybe those two i would redo they're not bad though like i really like all of them as a whole they work really well together but my favorites i really like january june july um october and november november is a vibe y'all y'all know my professor tried to get me not to include november november i was like squeeze me um needless to say she's right there <laughs> But yeah, that was that project. And then I just did a little ending closeout page and with my info on it in case they couldn't reach me and tell me I got in. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then just to let them know that this is the end of the presentation and I ended it with my logo. And that was pretty much it. So I hope you guys uh, really enjoyed this video. I know I really liked watching these videos while I was making my own portfolio to get into the program for my school. Um, looking at what other people turned in and what other people presented. And I think this is cool too because this is a digital only version because of COVID. So uh, any guys that are going to continue to take at home classes as we like get ready to go back in person. Um, this is just an idea on how you can present your work. Uh, that works for me, obviously. Um, but yeah, I really like how my portfolio turned out. I like the confidence that I had in it. Like I'm usually the type when I see other people's work, I'm like, oh, I don't know if mine's gonna, mine's gonna hit the mark. But like as I continue to saw, as I continue to see other people's work, 
um, I remained confident in mine and I was like really happy about that. Um, but yeah, thank you again if you made it all the way through the video. I hope this was informative. I hope you liked it. Um, and definitely subscribe so you can not miss any other of my new graphic design content I'm planning on doing. I want to do a lot of logo redesigns this summer because I love watching those videos. They're so fun. Um, I want to do some illustration videos on Procreate and just like illustration in general. Um, and I hope that you guys will stay tuned for the ride. See how well this goes. Uh, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and share these videos on your social media. Um, I definitely will post, like, repost on my story <laughs> if I see it. Um, and thank you, thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone has a wonderful day, wonderful whatever time it is. And I will see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>